ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونتوب اليه ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد النبي الامي وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما الحمد لله والشكر لله الحمد لله والشكر لله الحمد لله والشكر لله we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we praise him we glorify his blessed name subhanahu wa ta'ala for all the blessings that we're experiencing for all the blessings that we've experienced in our lives and for the blessings that we are experiencing right now and that we shall experience inshallah and we ask him to send blessings and peace upon the best of creation our master sayyidina muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his family and followers and all those that follow him in ihsan until the last hour sallallahu alaihi wasallam alhamdulillah wa shukrillah so we are blessed we're blessed to <coughs> uh, be honored with the tawfiq to come here on yawm al jumu'a and that this is a blessed blessed day and this is the blessed hour and this is a time when if we could see the reality of what is happening in the realm of the un- in the unseen realms then we would be taken aback at how much blessing and wonders and uh, providence and grace is flowing upon us at this moment that to have the tawfiq to have the god given success to respond to the call of allah to have the god given success to respond to the divine call that allah ta'ala says ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu idha nudiya lis salati idha nudiya lis salati min yawmil jumu'ati fas'u ila dhikrillahi wa dharul bay' that o people of faith when the call is made on the friday for the prayer when the call is made for the prayer on the day of gathering friday then hasten hasten to the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and leave off trade, leave off our professions, leave off our worldly pursuits for a few moments to engage in dhikrullah, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that Allah ta'ala calls this momentous occasion that we're partaking of right now, the, the Salatul Jumu'ah He calls it subhanahu wa ta'ala dhikrullah, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that this is really the key to blessings in our lives the only basis of blessings in our lives is the remembrance of the divine the only basis of blessings in this universe is remembrance of the divine and at any point when we are divorced from the remembrance of the divine la qadar allah then this is uh, these are moments of worthlessness and these are moments of no benefit and these are empty moments and so the remembrance of allah is what infuses our lives with meaning the remembrance of allah is what infuses our very breaths with meaning the remembrance of Allah is what what gives substance to an otherwise empty existence of just going about our days and our nights and going through the routines that Allah Ta'ala has blessed us with but for the sake of those routines and for the sake of a temporary existence and for the sake of the here and the now and this illusory realm that we've been placed in the dunya it's called the dunya in arabic and it comes from a root that has the meaning of being the lowest being the lowest and the nearest because it's nearest to our conscious because we are in this realm but it's also the lowest of realms it's the lowest of realms that in and of itself the dunya is a low thing and that the dunya is in the in the from the perspective of being something so low it's defined as that which that of this world which distracts us from the divine and so anything and everything of this world that distracts us from the divine is low and meaningless and nothing and empty and vacuous and harmful 
and that the only thing that gives this world meaning and flavor and beauty and honor and worth is the remembrance of its creator, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Really, it's the remembrance of Allah. Anything connected to Allah's remembrance is good. And anything disconnected from Allah's remembrance is not good. And this is the Qur'anic consciousness that we have to develop. That as, as our masters teach us, and when we read the Qur'an on a daily basis, inshallah, that it's not something of just a rote ritual that we do simply for uh, the sake of a ritualistic practice. Although if that is how it's done, it's still beneficial, it's still praiseworthy, it's still the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being recited. But ultimately our, we, our goal should be to connect our hearts to the Qur'an such that نتشرب, that we absorb its meanings that we absorb, absorb its meanings into our hearts and therefore our very consciousness such that our consciousness shifts such that the way we see the world shifts such that the basar, the eye is infused and connected with the basira, the eye of the heart, the insight and so that when we see things with the eye we interpret it with the, with the basira, the eye of the heart and the eye of the heart, the more we can we develop this Qur'anic consciousness, the more the, the, more the basira opens, the more, the more the eye of the heart opens up. And then this, what, this, what this eye sees has meaning. And this is something that we have to work on, is developing this Qur'anic consciousness, of realizing that the only good is what Allah deems as good. The only good that exists in this world is where there's tawfiq, when Allah inspires a servant to do something that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the only evil in this world is khidnan, when Allah Ta'ala turns that person away, forsakes him to his own ego, such that he commits a crime according to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. That this is the consciousness that we have to develop. And when we develop this consciousness as we grow and as the basira opens up, we start to see the meaning of things. And we become what our masters called Ahl al-Ma'ani, the people of meaning. This is the goal that we should have, that we are not limited by the substance of the world, but we perceive the meaning. What does this mean? What are the eternal consequences of this? This is how we have to perceive the world. And this is how the Qur'an calls us, invites us to this beautiful banquet. It's an invitation to a beautiful banquet. It's not something, you know, it seems difficult at first because, again, it's the dunya, it's what's nearest to us. But to, but to open our insights such that we perceive meaning is is the most beautiful way to exist in this world. And the people of Ma'ani, the people of meaning, are constantly in a state of connection with their Lord. And that's the greatest blessing and greatest happiness and joy that can, that can exist. And today we live in a time where every depression is affecting multitudes of peoples, Muslims and non-Muslims alike, of just feeling down. And, then, and that, you know, having, having this sense of huzn, of, of, of just feeling depressed and sad and that while that is a real condition for many people for a lot of people it's because they're not perceiving reality as it should be perceived and our Prophet وسلم, one of his beautiful du'as Allahumma arina al-ashia kama hiya Oh Allah show us reality as, they, as it really is show us things as they really are show us things as they really are and another narration, Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqa wa rizukna tiba'ahu wa arina al-baatila baatila wa rizukna jtinaabahu O Allah, show us reality as reality and grant us the tawfiq, provide us with the ability to follow it and show us falsehood and fa as falsehood and grant us the tawfiq to stay away from it. And so this is the consciousness, the understanding that we have to, de that, that we have to develop and inculcate in our minds through our devotional practices through the reading of the Qur'an and the remembrance of Allah. And then when that eye is opened, gatherings like this become the most momentous things of our week. That to come together for the Jummah and to fulfill this obligation, if we saw the angelic support that we have, if we saw the lack of demons in the gathering, if we saw the blessings that are pouring on us right now, we would be in a state of utter joy, which is why it's a joyous day. It's a Mubarak day. It's the Eid of the week. And so just the anticipation and the excitement of the believer when they enter into any good deed, enter into any virtue, they perceive the eternal consequences. These are baqiyatu salihat. That I am, I am investing in an immortal good deed. 
baqiyatu salihat and a good deed that will last forever and ever and ever. And to, inshallah, by these immortal good deeds, perhaps one day Allah, Allahumma alhiqni alhiqna bis salihin that join us in the ranks of people of immortal good deeds. And that ultimately the word salihin, that it means the people of righteousness, but it comes from a root that means to be appropriate. The hadha salih bi hadha, this thing is salih for something else. It's appropriate for it. Because ultimately the destination of the salihin is the divine presence. The destination of the salihin is to be in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they are salihin for that. They are appropriate for that meaning. They are appropriate for that company because they lived accordingly in this world and they perceived the true meanings of things and they responded appropriately to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so this is, these are things that we should be, our, open our hearts to these meanings and be aware of and realize their significance and not to be distracted by the mundane. That this world is in its, in its essence is mundane if it's, if it's seen as the end. But if it's seen as a means of investing in these immoral good deeds, then it's a beautiful thing. And this is the nuanced vision of the true believer, how they see the world. That if it distracts me from Allah, then it's a bad thing. And that's the, all the negative, uh, you know, the, when the Qur'an condemns the dunya, and the ahadith that condemn the dunya, all of these texts in the Qur'an and the ahadith of our beloved Wasallam that condemns this world, that's what it means. It, it's condemning the aspect of this world that veils us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that distracts us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whereas if we see it as an opportunity for investment, then the world is a beautiful thing. And we appreciate the world because it's a gift that Allah, it's the gift that Allah ta'ala granted us to be here. It's a place of blessing. It's a place of opportunity. It's a place to really roll up our sleeves and do something for Allah. And in that sense, it's positive. And it's ultimately a reminder that everything in this world is pointing to the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And from that perspective, it's a beautiful thing. That the ulama say that the outward of the world is a glitter. And that that's what the ego gets caught up in. But the inward reality of the world is an ibrah, is a reflection. And that's what the heart can perceive when it's opened. That's what the heart can perceive when it's open. And so opening our hearts and our eyes to these real meanings and re trying to see things as they really are and being ever vigilant in growing in this. And this is the benefit of dhikr that we are at a gathering, Allah Ta'ala calls it dhikrullah, that when we leave, the Qur'an says that when we leave afterwards, resume our worldly activities, pursue our rizq, but make wathkurullah kathira, make much remembrance of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. That we go back into the world. This is temporary. This gathering is temporary. Our devotions, our devotional acts are temporary. We pray the five prayers. Each prayer is temporary. It's a few moments of devotion, but we go back in the world. We go back in the world. But what's the heart? The heart is supposed to be changing with each new devotional act, each salat that we do in the day, each yom al jumaa, each salat al jumaa that we go to. The heart should be growing and being infused, being infused with the remembrance. Of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we're in the world, the heart is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so make much remembrance of Allah. When we go back out, make much remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Really. Make much remembrance of Allah because it'll give meaning to our dunyawi activities. It'll give meaning to our worldly endeavors. And without the remembrance of Allah, our worldly endeavors are divorced. Without the remembrance of Allah, our worldly endeavors are divorced. And so this is the perspective and this is the way that the mundane becomes meaningful. That going to work, for example, in and of itself, a routine thing, what's the meaning behind it? What's the significance behind it? But the people of Allah, they make their intention that they're doing this work for the sake of Allah. Because it's first, firstly the sunnah of the prophets to earn a living. It's the sunnah of all prophets, alayhi wasallam jami'an, to have some livelihood. Every single prophet had some livelihood and they earn money on their own, with their own hard work. And so that's the intention of the believer. And then to earn a halal income so that they take care of themselves and their dependents, whoever, their, their families, with halal food and halal income, lawful income. And all of these to engage in reflecting on our intentions and then the intention infuses the, the previously mundane act into baqiyat al-salihat. Going to work becomes an immoral good deed. How do I get close to Allah? I have to spend ten, 8 to 10 hours at work every day and it's so mundane. Feed it. 
feed it, in, in, infuse it with the intention of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That this is serving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And all those eight to ten hours become registers of good deeds that will last forever and ever and ever. Seriously, when we eat a meal, that is not just putting food in our system and then moving back to whatever. No. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful, the most gracious. Bismillah brings the barakah of the ism of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The ba they say, musahaba, that this is the ba, the letter ba. Bismillah is the ba of accompaniment, the ba of being with something. Because now, whatever act we start with, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, the ism of Allah, the name of Allah now accompanies every step of that act that we started with Bismillah. How much barakah is there in the name of Allah that we say tabaraka wa ta'ala, full of barakah and sublime and exalted, is He and His name, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sabbih isma rabbika al-a'la, glorify the name of your Lord Most High. And so eating a meal, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, and the whole meal is accompanied with the name of Allah and all the blessings of that name. And that intending, making a conscious intention, I intend to gain energy so I can do things for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I intend to have to eat lawful food that I'm not eating of anything unlawful. I intend to, to uh, enjoy a blessing of Allah and have gratitude afterwards. Because the, the sunnah afterwards, Alhamdulillah, الذي أطعمنا وسقانا وجعلنا من المسلمين Glory, praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who fed me and gave me drink and made me amongst the وَجَعَلَنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Made me amongst the people who realize meaning. He made me amongst the people who are conscious of these meanings, not just eating like cattle. And so to intend gratitude before the meal and realize the gratitude after the meal. And then inshallah, we, we enter the realm of the hadith, in the sahih hadith that the Prophet ﷺ said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَيَرْضَى عَنِ الْعَبْدِ Verily Allah is well pleased with the servant. And yakul al akrata fa yahmudu alayha to eat but a meal, but praise Allah for it. Or yashrub al sharbata fa yahmudu alayha, or to drink of a drink and then thank Allah of it. The seem the otherwise mundane becomes something amazing. And so to infuse our activities days and nights with intention and gratitude, and turning it into immortal good deeds, turning those things into immortal good deeds. وأستغفر ولكم فاستغفر الله إن الله غفور رحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا and so we can start to appreciate the words of our beloved Messenger وسلم, in Sahih Bukhari when he says وسلم, That the example of the one who remembers his Lord and, and the one that does not is the example of the living and the dead. The example of the one who makes remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala versus the one that does not is like the example of the living and the dead. And so we want to be people of life. We want to be people of real life. Because without the remembrance of Allah, it's an empty life, and it's akin to death. It's a spiritual death. And so this is something to appreciate, the importance of the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah. And that uh, this remembrance is, in, in reality, our masters say that the remembrance, why is it called dhikr? It has to do with recollection. It has to do with recollection, that there's something in us that already recognizes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His oneness and His Lordship over us. And this is based on the verse in Surah Al-A'raf that refers to the mithaq, the primordial covenant that every one of us made, that all of humanity made. In Surah Al-A'raf that Allah ta'ala says, وَإِذْ أَخَذَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ بَنِي آدَمَ مِنْ ظُهُورِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّتَهُمْ وَأَشْهَدَهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ قَالُوا بَلَا شَهِدْنَا أَن تَقُولُوا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ إِنَّا كُنَّا عَنْ هَذَا غافلين. Allah Ta'ala says, and when your Lord brought forth from the progeny of Adam, from their very loins, all of their offspring. And that there was a time before this dunya existence in which Allah Ta'ala brought forth every single one of us from our parents' loins all the way back up to Sayyidina Adam a.s. And they say, يَتَوَالَدُونَ قَرْنًا بَعْدَ قَرْنًا That it was commensurate to the birth 
that, ha that happens in this life, generation after generation, everyone was brought forth. The, their fought that generation, and then their children, and then their children, and then their children, all the way to the end of time. Everyone was brought forth in a majestic gathering with the Divine. And that Allah Ta'ala, أَشْهَدْهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ Everyone was made to testify against their own selves. We were all made to testify against our, our own selves. And Allah Ta'ala asked us, أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ Am I not your Lord? Am I not your Lord? قَالُوا بَلَىٰ We said, indeed you are. They said, indeed you are. Shahidna, we testify to this. And Allah Ta'ala ends, أَن تَقُولُوا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ إِنَّا كُنَّا عَنْ هَذَا غَافِلِينَ Lest you all say on the Day of Judgment, we, were, we didn't know about this reality. We didn't know about this reality. To prevent that, Allah Ta'ala made us all witness the work, the oneship, the, the, uh, the lordship and the oneness of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala. His rububiyya, أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ And so, so in reality, we are all but slaves. And look at the wording, أَشْهَدَهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ that he made them testify against their, their selves. And another meaning that we can understand from that is that the nafs, the lower nafs, against their own egos. Because it's the ego that wants to be Lord. It's this capacity in each and every one of us that wants to be Lord. And this is the ultimate severance from the remembrance of Allah. This is the ultimate lack of meaning, is the me, myself, and I that wants to rise in each and every one of us. The capacity in us that says, that reacts, you obviously don't know who I am. You obviously don't know who I am. You haven't seen my resume. You don't know about my achievements. You don't know about my feats. You don't know about my talents. You don't know about my capacities. That tendency in each and every one of us, that this is the ultimate veil from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that the more we're able to subdue this tendency, the more that we can be open to these meanings we spoke about at the beginning of the khutbah. That ultimately the remembrance of Allah means not remembering the nafs. The remembrance of Allah means not remembering the ana. And that one of our masters said, At tawheed isqatul ya'at. That tawheed, monotheism, monotheism, at the heart of monotheism, isqatul ya'at, is to drop the letter ya in Arabic, which when attached to a word is the pronoun of possession, the possessive pronoun. Kitabi, my book. Qalami, my pen. Sayyarati, my car. Bayti, my house. Aqli, my intellect. We all identify with these things. Each and every one of us identifies very closely with our achievements and our capacities and our talents and our abilities. <coughs> and so he says, our master, one of our masters said, at tawheed true monotheism, isqatul ya'at, is to get rid of the me, myself, and I. And the ana, and the ana, and the ana. Because the heart can only have one qibla. Just as in the salat, we can only have one qibla, either to the Kaaba or other than the Kaaba. It's either the qibla of the heart is either to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or it's to the nafs. The heart is filled either with Allah wa Rasulu or it's filled with ana. And we have to ask ourselves, where is Allah in our hearts vis-a-vis -vis ana? And the entire point of the religion at the, at the heart of it is the remembrance of Allah and ridding ourselves of the ana. And so, أَشْهَدَهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ The ayah says, Allah made us testify against our own selves and against our own lower tendencies of the ego. Really, that the ego has no excuse. Because the ego is abd. أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ means the ego is abd. أَنَا abdi, أَنَا abdu Allah. This is what we have to submit to. And so, realizing this, and working on ourselves to subdue this capacity, subduing this ego, that one of our masters said that commensurate to the how we don't identify with the ego is how much we'll get to know our Lord. بِقَدْرِ أَجْنَبِيَّةِ مِنْ نَفْسِهِ تَحْصُلَ الْمَعْرِفَةَ بِرَبِّهِ That commensurate to how strange I find my own self, my own ego, is how much opportunity, how much the door will be open to know my Lord, to have a real knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that the people that experience this they never want to turn back to the ana. The ana becomes gross. And this is the ultimate meaning that they perceive, is how disgusting I am. Really, how full of, you know, spiritual filth I am. This is the way of the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is they see themselves as, you know, there's awliya that they, when they would go and they would see immoral behavior around them, that they would say, Bishuk me, uh, Bishuk me, uh, 
Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad, that um, uh, the translation of which is, it's because of my lack of blessing, it's because of my negative impact, it's because of my spiritual dearth that they fell into what they fell into. The criminals and the immoral people and the indecent people, it's because of my own lack of barakah, shu'm, lack of barakah, that they did that. And then he quoted the ayah that, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُغَيْرُ مَا بِقَوْمٍ حَتَّى يُغَيْرُ مَا بِأَنفُسِهِمْ That Allah will not change a people until they change their own souls. And so to see, because if I were a truly <coughs> saintly person, if I could have, if I were a person of meaning, and if I were a person of ma'rifah, and if I were a person of walaya, if I were truly a wali of God, the people around me would not commit anything indecent. And they would not do anything immoral. Because my influence would, the light that comes from the heart of the wali overwhelms the indecency around him. And so we should only blame ourselves for anything that people around us might be, do, might be doing wrong. This is the way of the odiya, that they see themselves as disgusting. And that when people do something, when people insult them, they thank them. <coughs> Seriously, the people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when they're insulted by someone, when someone speaks ill of them, then they thank them. Thank you, because I agree, I have that fault. You helped me point out something that I have. You're absolutely right. I am, I am pathetic. And I'm, I'm conscious. I need to work on myself. Jazakumullah khairah. May Allah reward you for pointing out my faults. That's the people of Allah. Because their concern is not people. Their concern is Allah. And the only way I can get to Allah is to rid myself of these ayub, of these defects. Alhamdulillah. And thank you for reminding me. I'm going to work extra hard on this, on this problem that you pointed out of me. Ahmed wa Seriously, Abu Hanifa, once someone insulted him, he sent him sweets. It's in our books. Someone insulted him, he sent him sweets and dates, and he, said, he sent him a letter saying, I'm sorry, I couldn't repay you in full. What you did for me was much greater. This, I still fall short. This is the way, way of the people of Allah. This is the way of the people of meaning. This is the meaning. It changes the lens. It changes the lens. Everything gets flipped upside down. Because we see the eternal consequences of these things. At the moment someone insults me, it hurts. But if I perceive the eternal consequences, Alhamdulillah. If he's correct, I need to work on it. He reminded me. If he's incorrect, I have an ajr with Allah. And I move on. Because my concern is this battle. Is it ana or is it Allah wa Rasul? What's, in this, what's, it, what's inside this? Like the poet said, Laka fi qalbi dar. Laka fi qalbi dar. Oh Allah, you have, a pla- you have a home in my heart. Oh Allah, you have a home in my heart. This is, you know, is it who lives, who resides in our heart? Is it me, myself, and I, or is it Allah and His Messenger? Wasallam. This is the question we have to ask ourselves. And this is the goal that we should seek. And everything will change. All of, all of the outward difficulty will translate into eternal blessings. Eternal blessings. And this does not mean we don't struggle against what's wrong, but we perceive it with the right eye. So we ask Allah Ta'ala to make us realize, we ask Allah Ta'ala to make us people of ikhlas, we ask Allah Ta'ala to make us people of tawbah and tawfiq and barakah, and to make us ahlul ma'ani, people that perceive the real meanings of things as revealed to, to us in the Qur'an and noble sunnah of the best of creation. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allahumma inna nasalaka al-afiyah fi dunya.